everyone, this is a 360 tour of Machu Picchu, the lost city of the Inca. Built in the 15th century and forgotten 500 years until... Until it was discovered by me. Here I'm being an American adventurer, historian, and world famous explorer. All right, well, after many hoops being jumped through, we have made it up to Machu Picchu. Got the permit, everything's supposedly good to go. I'm getting a character as Hiram Bingham. It was probably, Hiram Bingham was the explorer, American explorer and historian who found this place 100 plus years ago. And um, it must have been really challenging for him when he discovered this place 100 years ago. But it's equally challenging for us 100 years later to film in it. Um, but we're doing our best. And we're excited to bring Machu Picchu to you all in 360 degrees do our best to kind of find places where there's not million plus people. Um, supposedly they have 8,000 visitors a day, um, which is pretty easy to, to see because just over there beyond all the mist is a lot of people. So we got here as early as we could. We were in line at four in the morning and there was already a giant line to get up here. But if you are interested in, in seeing Machu Picchu for yourself, we are going to be doing like a before you go guide where we share all of our tips and uh, point some things out so you guys don't have to make the mistakes that we did. But let's get filming. So for all of you wondering how we were making these VR videos, we were using the GoPro Odyssey. It's a collaboration between GoPro and Google that basically has a 16 GoPro camera that stitches together into a single clip to make a virtual reality film. So it's the best camera on the market at the moment and it's gonna give us a really immersive experience. The reason we chose Machu Picchu as a VR site is because A, a lot of people are interested in it and B, VR has the ability to transport you to places and make you feel like you're there. The situation here is perfect. You have a lot of things that are at a good distance. It'll be per perfect for looking at in VR, so make sure you see the film once it goes live. So the first shot we're doing is at these terraces right here. This is kind of an uncrowded spot, but it does kind of show the genius of Inca engineering, which was to make these terraces that function not just as a retaining wall to basically stop this place from sliding away, but also as a drainage system because it rains a ton here and allows the water to seep down right back into the earth rather than creating rivers that would wash away everything below it. Um, but it also was used to grow food. Apparently it could feed up to a thousand people who lived here at one point. So this beautiful building back here is the guard hut. We don't know if guards live there, but it's a good name for it. So we all know you guys want that awesome Instagram picture. This is where you get it. This is called the Guardian's Hut, Caretaker's Hut, and it's got a view of all the terraces and the city below. That is when it's not covered in mist and mysterious and tough. Or crowded with tons of people. Well, it's always crowded with tons of people, but sometimes it's not covered in mist. first take at the caretaker's hut which is the hardest place to get without people and right when we've nailed the perfect perfect take this guy comes up and he's just like chicos 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 asking to see our film permit of course we had him but the shot was ruined it's just kind of funny all right anyways here we go So the day is progressing and we're making uh, making our way through the city. We're at what used to be the old quarry where they got the stones to build the city. Alex is remaining in character all day. Who the hell is Alex? <laughs> My name's Harem. Bingham. <laughs> yeah, the stones were most likely taken from this quarry where they were cutting slabs, hauled into place, and then chipped away until they fit together just right. <laughs> Oh, 
All right, so the 360 shoot continues. We've done about half of the takes that we need to take. And uh, we're really just kind of working around the rain and the crowds. Um, there's tons of people here in the morning. In the afternoon, it chills out. So we're kind of just waiting for the crowds to pass, waiting for the clouds to pass. And while it's raining, we're kind of in this cool hut. There's only a few of them that have been reconstructed like this because UNESCO requires that uh, they maintain the area as it was. Um, so therefore, there's only a few spots like this, but they make good rain shelters. How are you guys holding up? Creel? Good, very good. Good, it's a long day, lots of up and down. I think we've probably walked around five or six miles so far um, because you can only really do a circuit. You, as we've shot around the people and the crowds and the rain, we've had to do two circuits so far. Um, but it's a really nice place to be, you know, and uh, I feel lucky to be here. Definitely. Especially being back in this place that I discovered in 1911, 106 six years later. It's pretty crazy stuff. We're now in what's known as a Casa del Inca. This is basically the royal residence of the emperor for when he came to Machu Picchu. About half of Machu Picchu is agricultural where you see all the terraces, the other half is residential. If you can see here, the stonework here is incredible. A lot of these slabs are up to three tons in weight and are perfectly fitted together. This room's cool because there's actually a bathroom right there and you can see where the bed would have been when the emperor would have stayed here. Behind us is the hitching post of the sun. Essentially it's a sundial, except it measures the year instead of the day. Pretty incredible spot. Really puts into perspective just how in tune with the elements and the sky the Inca were. What's most impressive about it is it's the only one that exists in Peru. The Spanish destroyed all of them in a way to wipe out the Inca religion and replace it with Catholicism. So the fact that this exists is extremely rare and very special. So out behind us is the central plaza of Machu Picchu. It's really cool because this is a very sacred temple. It's the temple with the three windows. Over there is kind of the residential area. It's where all the people lived. Usually they have llamas roaming around here. And one of my favorite things about Machu Picchu is that they don't actually employ landscapers. They just employ llama scapers. And the llamas cruise around and nibble on the grass and keep everything looking clean. I'm in grabber. Oh my God. Go, it's going, dude. It's, it's going. going. It's, it's going. going. It's, it's going. It's Oh. oh, oh, here it comes, oh. here it comes. Oh. oh! Get her, get her, get her, get her. So a lot of people wake up super early to get here, but as you can see, it's about 2.30 right now and the crowds have emptied out. The afternoon is easier to pull off because you don't have to wake up early and there's no one here so why wake up when you could just have it all to yourself in the afternoon okay so we're now in the sacred plaza this is where you find the temple of the three windows as well as the hitching post of the sun and the, the temple of mayor the main temple the Temple of the Three Windows is named because these three windows frame the mountains behind them. And according to Incan myth, those mountains are where the children of the gods came down to earth. Behind me you can see one of the areas where the foundation was not that great and the rocks have actually slid off of balance. But that's really one of the only places in the entire complex where that's happened. which goes to show how well made these buildings were. 
These buildings have survived earthquakes that have destroyed other parts of Peru. It's temples like this that kind of fuel the idea that this could have been primarily a religious place because it does have such obvious connotations uh, with the Inca religion being pr close to the sun god and uh, close to the gods in general at this high elevation. So this is the final walkthrough of the final scene in our VR film. We're gonna go over the lines and kind of just work out the space where we wanna be. Um, virtual reality is totally different than regular filmmaking. Um, so body positioning is super important. Yeah, we can also use stereoscopic sound so that you can hear us and know to look in one direction. In this case, we've got this beautiful vista right here. We've got some llamas walking in the background. Alex and I are gonna walk from different directions, say our lines, and then finish this film. But you're gonna have to watch the whole VR film to see how it turns out. That's right. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to Bagger Brothers, turn on notifications, and stay tuned for the VR film coming out later this week. Not so to mention the entire vlog series. Go back, course. binge it if you haven't seen it already. In the meantime, stay curious, keep exploring, and we will see you on the road. The Inca Road. Peace. Peace.